Fabrizio Romano tweeted, here we go. So it's official. Jao Felix has joined Chelsea on a six month loan. Yes, people, I'm Boy, and welcome back to another transfer news video. Today, we're discussing Jao Felix's move to Chelsea. As always, let me know your thoughts on the transfer in the comment section down below. And if you're new around and you love transfer talk, make sure you subscribe on my road to 2,000 subscribers. This, I'm not gonna lie, caught me by surprise. I was talking about Jao Felix a lot on this channel, saying, oh, he could be going Arsenal. Oh, but United are also there. And who swoops in? Career mode FC, you can call them transfer takeover FC, call them what you want to call them. Chelsea swoop in with their money and get the deal over the line. Jao Felix is going to Chelsea. I can't believe it. It's actually a brilliant signing from Chelsea. They made a lot of signings. They're a volume club, quantity club. But I'm not going to lie, it's been all misses, no hits so far. Some of their signings, Aubameyang for example, poor, Wesley Fofana, can't even get on the pitch it seems like. Raheem Sterling, to be fair, he's been alright, but he's not really made as much of an impact as I thought he would make. This actually looks like a decent signing. Jao Felix on a six-month loan. He can come in and impact that club instantly. And also for Jao Felix, I'm just confused, to be honest. I mean, we're hearing he had Arsenal and Man United as his options. His Felix, um, Felix's agent himself said that he wants Felix to leave. He's trying to facilitate a move. And if Arsenal and Man United were options for him, why would he go Chelsea? Because he said that he actually liked the Chelsea project. For me, that is baffling. He must have known that Arsenal and United were not going to pursue a move. Or he didn't want to risk it. Because for me, it goes like this in terms of priority for Felix. It'd probably be Arsenal number one, United a close second, and then Chelsea all the way down here, man. They're not even third on the list. Like the gap from Arsenal, Man United to Chelsea in terms of a club that you'd want to move to is enormous right now because that club is in complete disarray. And then you've got Graham Potter, their manager. Is he even going to be there long term? Let's be completely honest. But this man, I mean, I kind of feel <laughs> I kind of feel for him. He's like a kid that never got any toys growing up and suddenly he's allowed every toy in the shelf. I mean, he went from signing basically no one with Brighton, working with down tools, working with the equipment he's got, to now he's been able to sign whoever he wants. He's become a checkbook manager under Todd Bowley. Is that really the best use of Graham Potter, though? I don't believe so. But overall, Jao Felix, they've signed a brilliant player into an absolute mess of an organisation. Chelsea have got a lot of fixing to do. I hear they're also going to get Nkuku over the line. Brilliant signing as well from Leipzig. Only problem is, he's a brilliant talent. Where are you going to fit him in, man? Like... This Chelsea team, it's like they're just trying to swing all these pieces from somewhere and they're just banking on it, figuring it out one way or another. I don't necessarily think it's the brightest strategy, to be honest, especially given the fact that Potter's just come in the club. He needs to implement his style because this club needs results. They get absolutely nothing right now. The morale's at, like literally at the basement, if that. They need something to click. He needs to imprint his style ASAP. He needs to ship out the Deadwoods. What he's trying to do is he's trying to bring in signings right now and it's just not wise. What you should do if you're a new manager is you implement your style on the current crop of players. You say, okay, I've got till the end of this season. That's what Chelsea should do. If they're signed uh, Graham Potter. They know he's a project manager. They should say to him, look, we're not necessarily looking for you to get Europe, for example, this season. That might be out of the question already, especially Champions League. We just want you to implement your style so we're good to go next season. And they should have told him, look, we're not going to make any key signings, to be honest. We're just going to let you do what you can with this squad. Then you tell us in summer after you've evaluated everyone. Who do you want to go and who do you want to stay? That's what would be smart. That's what play, that's what Arteta did, for example. That's what I'm sure Ten Hag is going to do in a way. But no, Todd Bowley wants to sign everyone and anyone like he's a kid in a candy store. It's not going to work. I'm saying it from an outside perspective. I'm not a Chelsea fan, but it is not going to work. You can't sign everyone and anyone and expect it to work. It's, you can't just build a super team. Chemistry, cohesion, tactics, it all plays a massive part in football. That is why you can have teams like Nottingham Forest, teams like Brentford beat Man City, for example. It's not just the players on the pitch. It's how they work together. It's the chemistry. And Chelsea have absolutely zero of that right now. Another aspect is, right, I just said they're in a, in, in a process. They're in a project. They've signed Felix on a six-month loan. If you're bringing in someone on a loan in Felix, unless they've got an obligation or option to buy, which I'm not sure of right now, that is off the basis that they're going to make an impact now. If he's going to go at the end of the six months, then they're just wasting this transition period in a way. Like the whole point of a transition period, a project, a process, is you develop the current players under, let's be honest, no strict expectations. That's the whole point of a process. It was the same with Arsenal Arteta, where we finished eighth. And it wasn't necessarily about results, although it did hurt a lot of Arsenal fans, including myself. But it was more about getting the players adopted to his style and then so they're good to go in a couple of seasons time. What they're doing is, is they're bringing a man in for instant results, but he probably won't be there at the end of the six months. Like, what's the point? Surely you just develop the current players. Sure, they won't be as good as Jao Felix, for example. But in six months' time, they'll be good to go and even better. And they'll be your long-term people at the football club, right? Of course, that, that point is disregarded given that Jao Felix could have a 
obligation to buy or option to buy inserted in his transfer to Chelsea. I'm not sure about that right now. But if it is, then that point, I kind of guess, makes sense. They're bringing in Jao Felix and they're going to try and keep him long term. Then the other aspect with Chelsea is, right, that this is a massive club, Chelsea, right? Like, they, they weren't always a massive club. Abramovich took them over and they've only really had their successful periods under Abramovich. Let's be completely honest about it. Before then, they weren't that successful. They've won Champions Leagues now. They've won Premier Leagues. They've won pretty much every competition, every club competition that exists on planet Earth. But the problem is now, can the weight of expectations be carried forward with Todd Bowley? We know he's not really a massive football fan. He wants to be a hands-on owner, which is nice to see. It's nice to see an owner that's invested in the club. But if you're not necessarily a football fan, is it the best thing? Let's be honest. It's like someone trying to chip. It's like me trying to go to NASA and give them advice. Like, I love rockets. I love space. My advice ain't going to do much to NASA. Let's be completely honest. Like They're going to take that with a pinch of salt. This brother, he's got all the money. He's got the checkbook. What does he really know about football? I probably know more about football than him. Let's be completely honest. Everyone in the comments knows more about football than him. So is it best for him to be so hands-on? He should let the, the, the directors of football do their job at the club. Let their man cook. You just worry about overseeing your finances. But he's trying to get involved himself. I don't know if, if it's necessarily the, the best idea. This Chelsea project, I'm going to be completely honest, it could go absolutely pear-shaped and Chelsea might fall back and never really return to where they were under Bramovich. Or it could be a brand new process with money involved and it could go bang in a couple of years' time. I don't know right now, but I think I'm looking at two ends of the spectrum because I do think Chelsea are like are nearing the ends of the spectrum. It's a very fascinating club to analyse right now. And for their supporters as well, I'd be worried if I was your, your supporters. I'd be worried and excited because this could really go pear-shaped and you could honestly fall back to where Newcastle have been for a long time, Everton are for a long time, where you're not picking up results, like you're not being a club that's winning trophies season in, season out, like you were under Abramovich. Or you could become even better and challenge every single year who knows man that's the way it is with Chelsea but overall it's interesting signing man signing Jao Felix am I salty I'm not really salty to be honest as an Arsenal fan I did think we'd have a good chance for Felix I did want to sign him but at the end of the day the players got his move which he wanted I still don't know why he he chose to go Chelsea if that's what he chose over the other clubs but he's gone to the Premier League that's what he wanted Chelsea signed a top player and I'm sure he'll help them this season especially with the abundance of injuries they've got let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on Jao Felix to Chelsea let me also know your thoughts on Chelsea as a whole because it's one of the more intriguing clubs in this Premier League and if you're new around here make sure you subscribe on my road to 2000 subscribers as I deliver football news pretty much every day I've been White Football and I hope to see you all in my next video